So very good morning to one and all. It's a combination of physical as well as virtual participants. So on behalf of the Vishwadi Library Network, let me extend my deep regards as well as very good morning to one and all in the fifth day of our five days national level research and academic skill development program. And this is not a new thing to the Vishwati Library Network. It's our regular practice of which basic aim is to excel the quality of the academic and research activities of Vishwati, of Bengal, of India and globe. The moment we are open it in the public domain, by virtue of technological compliance, there is no limitation of global, local, national like that. So in one way, we wanted to make it open and to ensure the quality of the academic and research activities throughout the year. This is our every month business. And as I said in last four days, that this particular fifth day occasion has its own glamour because this is particularly to commemorate and to pay homage to our Indian father of library and information science, Padmasri Dr. S. Ranganathan Ayar, who is supposed to be one of the pioneers in world library and information science field. And I'm happy to share with you all that this 9th, or you can say 12th August, one is official, one is physical or practical, we can say. These days have been declared by government of India as National Librarian's Day. So to pay homage to our Indian luminaries of library and science, Vishwati Library Network is not exception. And we have organized this five days program from 21 to today we are in the last day, that is 25th. So first day our speaker was Dr. Sandeep Kumar Pathok, who assumed to be the deputy librarian of Aizar Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. And our second day speaker was Professor Subir Kumar Rai, who is supposed to be the professor and head Department of Law, University of Bankura, that is Bankura University, West Bengal. Then third day, our speaker was Madam Dr. Nija Singh, who is supposed to be the librarian, TS Central State Library, Chandigarh, Indian Territory. And the day before yesterday, uh, day, yesterday, it was one of the Indian iconic figure of library and different science, academic and professional in both. And who is supposed to be one of the mentors in Indian allies at present scenario, none other than Professor N. Lakshman Rao from Telangana. He was the professor of Osmania University, library and different science, Hyderabad. And also at present, he is the president of Telangana Library Association. And today, I'm very happy that today we have with us Dr. Susanto Banerjee, who is assumed to be the university librarian of West Bengal State University, North of Vishwargona, Barasat, West Bengal. So if you go through the galaxy of my resource person, then you will find it's a combination of academician as well as library professionals and library professionals ranging from not only confined to university, but also it is actually State Central Library, Chandigarh to university librarian. It means in compliance with the legacy of Gurudev Tagore, this Vishwati Library network is always very keen to penetrate, to excel, to, to assemble all the classes of LIS professionals and academicians. This is not of our credit. We are only to carry out the role and legacy of our founded, founder, Gurudev Ravindar Chegar. So I have a long relation and I can claim myself as one of the dearest brother of our today's speaker to whom I consider one of my mentor and also my respected dada. So today my uh, senior colleague, Dr. Susanto Banerjee is here. So without losing much time, let me request my colleague, Sir Pradeep Hemram, who is assumed to be the assistant librarian and in charge Institute of Sangeet Bhavan, that is Institute of Performance, Performing Art. He is there and today I would like to take this opportunity to request my colleague Pradeep Da to introduce formally our speaker in the online and this blended mode platform, 
before taking his speech formally. So I think Pradeep, you are on the board. Pradeep, unmute yourself. You are muted. We found that you have joined in two modes. I mean, two, devi two devices. It may be one from desktop or laptop, another one from mobile, but one is with, yeah. Just unmute yourself. Yes, yes. Yes, Pradeep. Yes. Thank you. Can you hear me? Hello. Pradeep, you are audible, carry on. Hello. Thank you, Nimaida, for giving me opportunity uh, to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Susan Banerjee. Good morning, everyone. Today is the fifth day of five day national level research academic skill development program on the occasion of 132nd birth anniversary of Padmasri, Dr. Esa Ranganathan Iyer. On behalf of Vishwamitra Library Network, I introduce today's speaker, Dr. Susant Banerjee. Dr. Susant Banerjee comes from Islampur, a subdivision town of West Bengal. After doing his master's from DRTP, Indian Statistical Institute in Bengaluru. He worked several organizations, including all major stock exchanges in India and the corporate like DLF. He was the founding director of the British Council, Chandigarh. After British Council assignment, Dr. Banerjee joined as the director of American Information and Resource Center, American Consul in Kolkata. He wanted to work in Indian academia as he left American Center and joined West Bengal State University as the University Librarian and Director Center for Advanced Study. In West Bengal State University, he developed a state-of-the-art knowledge center from the scratch and also opened the library and information science department for the benefit of rural students, most of whom belong to the marginalized, familyized, and also to create employment opportunity for the uh, talented young generation in the field of library and information science. Dr. Banerjee received many uh, national and international awards, including Librarian of the Year Award by Yasplik and Superior Honor Award from the Department of State of the Government of United States of America. He visited many countries in Europe and Asia, and also many states of the United States of America for his professional development. He did his PhD on marketing and public relations. Dr. Banerjee is a follower of the ideology of former Indian president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Now, I am inviting Dr. Susant Banerjee to start deliberation to this topic on blended learning and and present Indian scenario. Sir, please. Okay, so thank you, Pradeep, for your uh, nice introduction of our today's speaker. And uh, I found on the board, Madam Nija Singh is there. So, Madam, if your time is permit, then I will request you to stay till last. And today, I would like to take up your opinion at the end, since today is our last day, as we don't have any formal validity session still, as you are there. And I found my colleague, former colleague, of course, Dr. Sujit Kujur, who is supposed to be the deputy librarian of Sikkim Central University. He is on the board. Sujit, also, if your time is permitting you, then you please stay on the board. At the last, I like to seek your opinion uh, soon after the spe speech is over by our today's speaker. 
and i think many more uh, stalwarts from different parts of india have been joined so after this speech of uh, our today's speaker i will request you to put up your opinion and just encourage us on your experience and encourage and motivate us to take up this kind of endeavor for future mission okay so with these few words let me request our today's speaker dr sushanto banerji to take care of his delivery sir sushanto da please So, okay, uh, good morning, everybody. It is really a pleasure to be here in Vishwabharati. I really feel proud that I am being invited for a talk in uh, this university, one of the most famous universities all over the world. I am really happy to see my brother and a very powerful librarian in our field, Dr. Nimai Shah, sitting just beside me. I am happy to see one of my um, members who used to regularly visit when I was in American Center, and she is now a librarian in this university, Ravindra Bhavan Library. Sadab. I am also uh, happy to see Nija. Nija, uh, you, may, you may not be knowing, she was the first intern in British Council Chandigarh, you know, which, which was developed by me, and she was a dedicated intern in my library. And now Nija is, I know, uh, in everywhere, uh, uh, all places. So welcome, Nija, to you. Welcome to all the library colleagues over here, all the students, those who are here today, and teachers, other people, those who have joined from different universities and institutions. Today is the day I am really happy that uh, just a day before our um, um, this uh, ISRO has achieved this biggest, biggest achievement, we are now on the moon. So with that happiness, I am in another happiest place in the world, Vishwabharati, and will be happy to talk something about education. We are the librarians. So we help people by giving information, by giving knowledge, by giving their required materials. This morning also, I had requested some people to give me the name of the librarian of ISRO, and I told them that I am confident this librarian would have a, you know, would have played a big role for this uh, achievement of ISRO. With this introduction, and also I will be uh, mentioning uh, the name of Pradeep, yes. who introduced me with all those kind words. I do not know whether I deserve those, but yes, he introduced me uh, with those kind words. So Pradeep, thank you. Uh, for introducing me. While um, talking on the topic to the blended learning mode, it is not new for all, we, we librarians. We are uh, called as hybrid library, we call a blended library, digital library, whatnot. So blended learning may be new word in um, our education system, but for we librarians, it is nothing new. We are, we are familiar with this word, maybe uh, two decades back, 20 years back, maybe I was familiar with these, um, with these terms. So the world is changing regularly and the various domains are also influenced by this change. When there is a change, all domains, major, majority of the domains, it is changed as per the change of the world. And automatically, the education system in India is also changing and uh, we are uh, experimenting all new things for the system for, to, to develop the education system in India, as well as the service providers like us, the librarians, we are trying to change ourselves, our services also for the development 
of library services which ultimately will develop the service of education now while talking to this digital resources which is one of the most uh, important component for uh, for the development for the enhancement of new education policy nep 2020 because when we talk about blended learning it is a combination of both that is uh, face to face teaching in classroom as well as uh, resources in digital mode so both a combination of both these materials we consider when you talk about blended learning the national education policy has given lot of emphasis to, for the transformation of education. The new NEP clearly states that it is a time to take on a policy that undoubtedly is student-centric. That undoubtedly is student-centric. And we can term this uh, student-centric as education 4.0. So there we are. New education policy says that students are the main stakeholders of education, for whom the education is meant for. So we need to give importance of their demands, of their requirements to fulfill their dreams and aspirations. In this line of thinking, the new policy gives the accessibility of many modes of learning. It is vocational courses, MDC, uh, and other courses like it, 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 it prompts use of vocational courses, multidisciplinary courses, multimodal approaches, thereby focusing on blended teaching mode. So when we are talking about multi-blended courses, when we are talking about multidisciplinary courses, vocational courses, it is obvious that we will need to have both, that is um, digital resources as well as one-to-one -one teaching in classroom. So there will librarians play a big role and we'll be seeing how our job is also changing as per the requirement of this policy, as per the requirement of the students so that they can fulfill their dream and aspirations. Uh, new academic policy, another important thing is all the concept, if we consider together, it is called ABC, academic bank, academic building blocks. So this is the place where all the concepts in uh, new academic policy of NEP 2020 is considered about. What is ABC? ABC building blocks is any subject combinations. It is something like America. You can take any subject of your choice. Any subject combination, notion of specialization, and more interdistinct manner. Then it comes Bachelor of Liberal Education. We used to say Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Commerce. Now the new policy says Bachelor of Liberal Education, notion of branches, broken or types of degrees to change convert credits into degree and diploma, notion of educational currency broken, study in any national or international institutions, notion of physical campus and location broken, lifelong learning enabler, notion of time of education broken, that is past, slow, different uh, time of education that is broken in new policy. 
merging of regular distance online and virtual modes, notion of mode of education broken. So these are not the concepts, whether it is a distance course, whether it is a regular course, or whether you are uh, taking a course, it, it could be subject combination, could be of your choice. Uh, then uh, you can do a course, credit course, which could be converted actually into a uh, certificate, dip, diploma, all these courses. So these are the things, these are the important major things that is being considered in our new policy 2020 NEP National Education Policy um, of our country. But in reality, when you come to the reality, in, in this year, say for example, the admission process or admission scenario, if we consider this year, that is 2023, majority of colleges, they could not fill up their positions. Number one, that is the concern. I can give you examples of colleges where 70% seats are still to be filled up. So they are giving advertisement, re-advertisement, re-advertisement, still it is not filling up. Especially those for those uh, you know uh, degrees where it's a general degree. Then comes when we used to do our uh, uh, learning, our education, our honors candidate used to be considered a genius. Oh, he is uh, doing honors or, or something or mathematics or commerce or whatever it is. But now it is observed that most of the colleges, I'm not saying all the colleges, but most of the colleges, students are not going for honors degree. That is another very alarming situation. Third thing, which I will be mentioning here. Now it will be four plus one combination all over India. Four years uh, uh, UG, one year uh, PG. There is another important thing when I talk to the college professors, they are saying that students are not happy to have a four years degree UG, UG for, to continue their UG for four years. That is another important thing which is happening, but uh, that, is being, that is being there and we accept it, we have to wait and see. Now the question is when we are giving a degree for four years, university, the students will be there in the university for only one year. What will be the role of the university that is also coming into consideration now? Of course, time will say, but, um, but these are not the situation. Standing on this situation, we need to see what is the role of the, of the uh, teachers, what would be the role of the students, and um, what will be the advantages of blended, blended learning. And when we are considering about blended learning, what is the infrastructure we need for blended learning mode? And what is the present infrastructure scenario in India? I want to present a concise manner all these points and would be those who are here the, um, would be happy to have your views and your inputs also, because this is important. This is important for we librarians. We need to know where we are going and what we are expecting from our teachers and students. Um, how to go about it here? Yeah. Arrow down, arrow down. What? Yeah. Okay. Just enter it. Arrow cuts question. Slideshow program. Down arrow. Okay. I mentioned this chart to you already. Any subject combination students can take, any subject. Then Bachelor of Liberal Education, 
convert credits into degrees and diplomas, study in any national or international institutions, lifelong learning, uh, or, and uh, removing uh, the concept of regular course or uh, distance course. These are the focus of NEP. And as I said, standing on these focuses, standing on these objectives, let us see what will be, what will be, where will be there uh, when we consider blended learning. What is blended learning? There are definitions of blended learning, as I already said, is a combination of both classroom teaching as well as um, teaching through digital devices. The art of combining digital learning tools with more traditional classroom face-to-face -face teaching gave birth to the term blended learning. This definition, if you see, I do not know whether it is intentionally put this specific small word, more traditional classroom face-to-face -face teaching. I am not sure when we'll have the blended learning, this will be really applicable, but this is the definition given in many places. Blended learning is not a mere mix of online and face-to-face -face mode, but it refers to a well-planned combination of meaningful activities in both the modes. It is an instructional methodology. In a true blended learning environment, both the student and the teacher should be physically located in the same space. Here also I have a you know, reservation these definitions have been taken. It is not my definition. I am not the expert who can, you know, give a specific definition. Then my name will be written there, defined by Susanta Benerjee. No, I have taken it from very reliable sources. It says both the students and teachers should be physically located in the same space. We understood when Corona was there that we used to send materials to our students. Somebody used to do recording, uh, voice recording, and used to send it through you know, WhatsApp, chat, different modes. So till date, we used to understand, I do not know uh, what Nimai thinks, who is sitting beside me, that blended mode is something which will be you know, online mode as well as offline. I am sitting here, I am teaching my students, and when I am not sitting here, I am teaching my students in a far away places. But the concept now says, if you see the next paragraph, it says resources such as video lectures, podcasts, recordings, and articles would be provided in order to transfer the main bulk of necessary knowledge from teachers to students before each class. Then, when we are sending the bulk of resources to our students through digital modes, then it says, this, this means that we are making the students ready for the class. So when the particular student come to the class, we can concentrate on him much more. We can be teaching him one-to-one -one and give him much more information, can sit with him for, you know, one-to-one -one or a group discussion so that uh, he is aware before and that's what we are sending these materials to him. That is the concept of blended learning mode now. But before reading or before going through blended learning or you know education policy, we had an idea blended mode will be both we librarians used to think, I do not know what professors they will be thinking. We used to think blended mode means we will be, we'll be giving information offline as well as online. But the definition says more, you know, face-to-face -face class uh, teaching as well as we'll be sending the resources to the users beforehand so that 
they are ready for the class and that will be discussed in the class. So that is blended learning. The important features of blended learning, increased student engagement in learning. It is of course, when you have resources, when uh, we get a teacher as per the definition with me and when we get the information beforehand, I'll be more engaged, I'll be more happy, I'll be more, uh, you know, information uh, informative before I come to the class. When I get, you know, another mode of information, not only books, say, uh, as we said, podcasts and other materials beforehand, I'll be engaging myself more than what I used to be, uh, I used to engage myself earlier. Enhanced teacher and student interaction. That is obviously true. When we, we the, if we, if, if we introduce computers, if we introduce online modes, if we introduce all other technology uh, in educational uh, purpose, then the students and teachers interaction will be much better than what it was earlier. For example, when we did not have, uh, you know, uh, lap, uh, or um, iPhone, um, uh, smartphone, we did not have an opportunity to make a group of students and sending them information. Now we have the opportunity to make a group of students and of course sometimes teachers and send them information. In our age, when we did our uh, even master's degree, we did not have a chance to have a smartphone. So we used to have only uh, physical resources. So the possibility of engaging students and the possibility of interaction between the students and teachers will be much more that is expected. Responsibility for learning. This is uh, without saying it is of course, when we are sending materials beforehand to the students, it would be his or her responsibility to go through those materials and come prepared for the class. Time management and flexibility. That is, of course, it says learn anytime, anywhere. When we are in digital mode, when we are in blended mode, there is no restriction of attending class as per the routine of the class. Now what do we do in our uh, subjects in different subjects we make it a class routine and give it to the students this is your class routine you have to come such and such time but when it is a blended mode you can learn when you want to learn as per your choice because classes will also be recorded classes will also be recorded that recorded things you can you can go through as per your own flexibility as per your own time so time management and flexibility is very much possible when we are going for a blended mode. Improved student learning outcomes. Learning outcomes is important. What I am teaching to my student, what they are taking, what they are learning now, when it is a face-to-face uh, -face teaching, we have to understand by seeing the uh, faces, of the student, how much he is taking, how much he is in my class, whether he is thinking or she is thinking something else or not, whether it is interesting for him or not, that we have to have the sense by reading the face of the students. But when it is a blended mode, uh, learning the outcome from the students is very easy. As uh, Dr. Shah was mentioning that Vishwamarathi is developed uh, uh, software or uh, which could be used specifically to understand all these modes. What the students are thinking, whether the student is attending the class, if he is attending, when he has entered, when he is going out, all this is possible. So outcome of the, or result of my teaching, outcome of my talking <laughs> will be easy to know when we use blended mode. Signed out? Why it is saying signed out? 
वैसे ओके 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 इनक्रीज लार्निंग स्किल्स एटा तो अवश्य ही जे लार्निंग स्किल इट विल बी इम्प्रूव्ड बिकॉज़ व्हेन यू हैव कंप्यूटर्स व्हेन यू हैव वी हैव स्मार्टफोन्स लैपटॉप्स आईपैड्स आईफोन्स आई डू नॉट नो व्हाट नॉट लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स सो वी लर्न मोर व्हेन इट इज a blended mode greater access to information why it is greater access to information if you see this uh, picture simply here it would be uh, university of usa i do not know uh, maybe campus of cambridge i am not sure which university is this but uh, uh, is a university campus of usa so greater access to information because what they are doing when you have you are learning through blended mode you can come to know from them what they are doing for example sitting in my office now i can call um library of congress librarian asking him or her what is the latest going on in your uh in your country for space research that is possible so uh greater access to information we have a network of university libraries for example when you have that uh, network we have much more access to to information so for example in my university <clears throat> we we do not have a, uh, a library like this i i feel always happy to see this library our library will be i do not know this maybe this conference room or double of this size is a very new uh, new uh, university so um when i see it in my uh, office somebody comes from a department asking for a material simple for a book we i have to cut my sorry face that i don't have that i can give you an example it was uh, you know deep corona period no one was going out and uh, that uh, shut down or what about the new words were there so <clears throat> one fine morning i get a call from one of our professors of urdu he says dr banerji i need an urgent help from you i said what i need a book a uh, urdu book i said urdu book we do not have any urdu book in our library so he says uh, but i need this book urgently then i i was really feeling that his urgency by the way he was talking to me and i i am the librarian that to <laughs> university librarian um i told him okay you give me the name of the book so that i can i can see whether i can help you out then i could go to the national library you know portal or whatever and find that book is there luckily we have a network of librarians one or the other we know people Uh, in different libraries i called him immediately brother i need this book he was very kind enough he said okay send your professor to my uh library i will also be going to the library for him only because those days corona no one used to go out he went and he gave the book to her that professor so it is resource sharing greater access to information when it is a blended mode also it is a book when it is a non book also it is easy that we download materials and send to our colleagues improved satisfaction and learning outcomes again i have to say the same thing because in our days we used to read only books but now all colorful things things like this you know when we see this um, screen something gives our eyes you know feel good uh, factor so it is improved satisfaction opportunities to both to learn with others and to teach others this is very important statement i find because to learn with others group activity it is possible and teach others when i am i i know a uh, subject i can go and talk on this and can teach others that facility that flexibility we get when it is a blended mode so in a nutshell 
it is a win-win situation when we go for a blended mode of learning. Role of a teachers in blended learning. That is really important. Till date, teachers were knowledge providers. We used to consider our teachers that they will come and teach us. But now in blended mode, it says not only a knowledge provider, to he will be a coach and a mentor. And a mentor, not only a teacher who will be coming, delivering his lecture and go, but he will be coaching you and mentoring you. This shift does not mean that teacher play a passive role or less important role in students' education. Quite the contrary, with blended learning, teachers can have an even more profound influence and effect on students' learning. Why I'm saying this? Because I am the person, as a teacher, send materials, send all documents to my students and ask him, brother, go through these materials and come to the class next day. Let us talk and see whether you are facing some problem after going through these materials. So he will have much more influence. He will have much more impact on the students. Rather, what he used to have before this blended mode of learning. In Before blended mode of learning, he used to come and deliver his lecture. But now, not only he will be delivering his lecture, he will be a mentor as well as a coach to the student. Traditionally, classroom instruction has largely been teacher-directed, top-down, but with blended learning, it's now become more students-driven. It is bottom to top. Always we teachers, we used to go to the class and teach the students. They used to take from us. Now the approach will be students will be ready for the class and they will ask, ask you questions. They will have the clarifications from you. So the approach will be you know, just reverse. It was top to bottom. Now it will be bottom to top. By yields, BL yields more frequent and more personal teacher interaction with individual students. Teachers have the opportunity to depend and strengthen students' teacher relationships. I have already mentioned that how this relationship will grow, will develop. If a teacher keeps on you know, interacting with you, keeps on uh, giving you information, keeps on uh, helping you with different materials, whether it is online or offline, it is obvious that the relationship with you, with your teacher, will be much more than what it used to be earlier. Here, which is not mentioned, I will also tell that group discussion is possible here. So making uh, a constructive relationship with the, with the students of uh, the same class will be, will be more um, possible now when we are going for blended environment. Finally, blended learning combines the best aspects of online learning with the best aspects of direct instructions. Helping teachers easily manage to do more to meet student needs with adding to an already weighty workload. Students learn, they will be benefited from the teachers as I said, <clears throat> as and when it is required, they can have the assistance of the teachers through online mode. So these are the role of a teacher when we are going for blended mode. <clears throat> uh, then comes the role of the students, role of learners. Increases student interest. 
automatically as uh, on the features i mentioned it will automatically uh, increase the interest because going through a book and going through a you know device like this is always different so it will increase in a hands the interest of the students keeps students focused for longer you know i i want to give you an example how students will be kept longer sometimes um, while going through some books or doing some important um, class work or whatever related jobs when i work for a uh, long time in night say it is 3 o'clock sometimes or 2 o'clock and if i open the messenger uh, accidentally of course i see lots of people are there in the messenger lot full everyone is talking doing something in messenger so why is that why because they are engaged uh, they you know uh, they get interest on that if you ask a student read a book up to 3 o'clock in night see the result how many days they may not but this small device made all of us addicted you know up to 3 o'clock 4 o'clock chatting if you ask what for this chatting i have some you know class notes or something or the other i don't know could be that is the reason but that creates interest as i said increase the students interest keeps the students focused for longer undoubtedly provides student autonomy again i have to say the same thing autonomy in a, now we have uh, we used to have when i was doing my education studies we used to have a joint family culture now we do not have any more joint family culture now we have nuclear family culture me my wife my son and my dog that is the concept now so autonomy students wants autonomy they want a room for them for their education purpose earlier we used to say ami tomar pora shunte pacchi na jore jore poro right read loudly so that i can hear now you cannot say that because i am reading in either in this device or ipad iphone whatever so it gives much more autonomy to the students in india autonomy is not recognized that way but in you know advanced countries we are also advanced now we are on the moon so um countries like america and europe their students are given more autonomy than indian students <clears throat> though i don't like the way they talk the way they behave in classes they sit on the table put their legs on the table we are we, we did not give that autonomy to our students that is good it is recorded i don't care of course um in still a uh, disposition of self advocacy promotes student ownership these are all we know self advocacy they, what they do promoting their own thing they are they can become their own advocates so that is possible allows instant diagnostic information and student feedback instant information now we want everything instant i go and uh, need a information like this so that information students can get when you have a blended mode and feedback also they can get from other students if they want enables the students to learn at their own pace already mentioned to you whenever whatever wherever they can learn as per their as per their choice because i think there won't be any age bar also now in new nep so who if there is no age bar learn whenever you want it says uh, multiple entry and exit policy so that is possible so learn whenever you want prepares the students for the future that we uh, that earlier also used to be that is nothing new in blended mode now coming to the main thing what i wanted to talk indian scenario indian scenario uh, if you see these all are the materials which will be required 
minimum i should say minimum re minimum required materials for a blended learning mode what are not those materials user computing device you need to have either a mobile phone or tab laptop desktop are required for supporting end user computing needs any of this i am not saying all of this but when you are a blended mode when you want to get the material sitting at your home from your teacher or want to send materials to your teacher you need to have either a smartphone a tab a laptop a desktop you know any of this is required lab devices what are lab devices we need to have desktops are required for laboratory audio audio visual devices projector smart board conference solution voice recorder these are all the required thing for your lab devices then comes core network to be placed at data center we need to have a networking system when you are thinking about blended learning you need to think about networking system what are all those materials we need you need to have a router of course link loaned balance we need to have we need to have firewall to protect wireless controller campus core switch ip cctv storage capacity all these materials we need to have when we are thinking about a blended mode distribution network for each building when you have a big campus like this you need to have a distribution channel what we are doing so for example i am sitting here this is it is distributed i uh, know i can see somebody was introducing me from some other place some other library so distribution network for each building distribution switches access switches to be to be placed in each building to support local lan connectivity to all required locations access points for wifi deployment ip cctv for physical security that is of course necessary when you are going for blended mode server it could be on campus server or could be on cloud we can hire cloud we can you know subscribe cloud or you can go for a our own own main uh, you know uh, server internet link that is very important internet leased link approximately 1 gbps for 1000 students only 1 gbps i said i don't know whether that is that will really fulfill 1000 but yes let us consider 1 gbps isdn integrated service digital network rf id in library we said rf link is necessary mpls necessary multi protocol level switching link for multiple campus connect connecting through different isps for redundancy these are all the materials we need then comes studio setup for lecture recording say for example nsou they have a beautiful studio where you can go and do recording and uh, that is recorded and that is being given to their students so what we need is the camera lighting backdrop microphone video editing software adobe or something like that 3d studio max movie maker coral draw all these are the requirements all these are the requirements for a blended learning it is not that easy that we, we get some software we buy some database and give it dump it to the students and that is all it is not blended learning means we need to have this kind of infrastructure then only blended learning will be a success now question is i will be coming next some uh, slides i will be showing you where what is the indian scenario next question is how many of universities forget about colleges or schools or i don't know how many universities can provide this kind of facility vishwa bharati okay of course shah sahib having all these facilities i know he is a lucky librarian but a poor librarian like me getting a computer is tough 
getting a laptop, I have to go to registrar's room for about three months, four months. Sir, my laptop is not functioning at least. Get it, you know, uh, repaired. So that is the concept we have. So blended learning, all advantages we know. We know the students will be much more smarter than what they are now. We know that it will be easy. They will be happy. All these concepts are there. But can they provide? Can the university provide all these facilities? Can a specific user provide mobile phone, tab, laptop, desktops, all these facilities? Question comes there. And that's what my title was, Blended Learning and Present Indian Scenario. You know the present Indian scenario, then only we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you. India has one of the largest higher education systems in the world, comprising of 993 universities. Please don't challenge me because it could be 1,000 also. But approximate, it is 993. 993 to 1,000. 51,649 higher educational institutions. It could be colleges, say IISC, IIM, IITs, they are there. That's what it says, higher educational and prestigious institutions. And approximately 3.74 crores of 18 to 23 age group. That is Indian present scenario. 993 universities, 51,649 higher educational institutions or institutions of repute, it says, and 3.74 crores of students 18 to 23 age group. This is the scenario. Now, what they do? Infrastructure. I was going through the infrastructure when I was going through NEP 2020. Recent report by UNICEF reveals that there is a large rural, urban, gender, language, and economic divide in India. We used to say earlier, uh, digital divide. Digital divide in India, it is not only digital divide. It is a divide of rural urban. It is a divide of gender, language, and economy. All are there in Indian society. So we need to consider all these gaps before we, I cannot say I am not a policymaker really. I am neither I am in UGC nor I am the mantri or santri. But I can only suggest that blended mode is not easy. Blended mode is not easy. Before going to the blended mode, we need to think, we need to give, emphasize also or to fill up these gaps. See the gap where we are now. Status of availability of electricity. Forget about computer, laptops, uh, uh, or tab. A nationwide survey conducted by Mission Antadaya. It is a bit, uh, you know, uh, old, 18 years when it was done in 1718, reveals that 16% of India's households receive one to eight hours of electricity daily. 16%, 16% gets only maximum eight hours of electricity per day. So how do they charge their mobile? How do they charge their laptop and other things? And that electricity power also, the volume or, or what it says, I don't know, is so low that, that uh, uh, voltage. voltage, the voltage of electricity, uh, you know, it is miserable. Then comes 33% receive 9 to 12 hours of electricity. And only 47, they are the luckier one, receive more than 40, more than 12 hours a day, while in USA, this percentage is 100%. No, um, kya bolte usko? Shut down. Ki No citizens out of electricity. Power cut, no power cut. 100% uh, always there is power. But we are sitting in lucky places like Calcutta or Shanti Niketan or I don't know, what not. Go to village and see the, see the actual reality. Though we talk all villages are having electricity, all villages, Pakka Road, that or this, but this is the practical scenario. <coughs> and 
that is being conducted by Mission Antodaya, is a something government project. And this was the findings of that, uh, of that uh, 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 survey. Status of household computers and smartphones. Amra dekhi shobar hathe ekta kore smartphone ekhon. Wherever we go, even people while riding a cycle also, they talk on mobile phone. I don't know how much they talk. Full day they have talked. So in the year 2019, only 11% of Indian households possesses any type of computer, which could include desktop computers, laptops, notebooks, netbooks, pantops, or tablets, as compared to 74% in the USA, only 11% Indian household have this facility. Why I am saying compared to USA? Because they are the guys who makes, who thinks that they have everything. They do have. That's what they they are successful in in uh, blended learning. I had a question when our Indian education policy almost jeopardized <coughs> during Corona time. I used to think what China and America is doing. Ch America situation was also very bad because a lot of people were you know, dying. What about China? I wanted to know China's situation. <laughs> Because our education policy, we do not know what to do. Somebody is doing something, someone else is doing something else, someone is doing something else, that way we are doing. But I used to think all the countries are doing the same thing. Then I could find that in China, they have a second set of policy. <laughs> they have a backup policy, which they could implement during those days. We did not have any. But we are thinking about blended education mode. And I have already mentioned, most of the colleges are vacant. Students are not taking admission. I am not blaming any policy. I do not know whether it is due to the policy, but that is the scenario I am talking about. Policy is always welcome. It is uh, the policy made by all you know, educated, uh, you know, strong heads people should be very useful for us also in times to come. But present scenario is this. Only 24% Indians own a smartphone. 24% of Indians own a smartphone. That is the statistics of that survey. While 66% of India's population lives in a village, only a little over 15% of rural households have access to internet. For urban households, the proportion is 42%. Only 8% of the households with members aged between 5 to 24 have both a computer and internet connection. So when you have only 15% internet connection, 66% people living in the village, out of 66%, only 15% have internet connectivity. In urban places, it is 42%. Only 8% households have both internet and computers. Only 8%. Please note that it is only 8%. This is not me. This is the countrywide survey report. Okay? So there we are. Gender gap, that is another big thing in India still. As per internet and mobile association in India, they are a very big group because they do big business. So they wanted to know what is the situation. As per the internet and mobile association in India, 2019, three years back report, 67% men had access to internet against only 33% women. That's what I was saying, gender gap. 
see the gap 67% versus 33% in rural india 72% and 20 uh, 28% in in urban area that is the difference only 1% difference gap of economic condition among the poorest 20% households only 2.7% have access to a computer 8.9% to internet facilities in case of the top 20% households the proportions are 27.6 and 50.5%. So that is the scenario of availability of electricity, computers, internet, laptop, iPhone, everything. And the gap of, you know, divide of uh, different community that is being shown here so what i wanted to show you here though we have a lot of advantages of um, blended learning where students will be benefited teachers will be benefited as a whole society will be benefited but are we really ready for blended learning in india that that needs to be thought you know another thing i am coming this is learning since i am a librarian as a profession uh, i will I, I am i am not i am not against uh, online learning or digital learning or platform like that people say uh, there is no reader of books so let us go for uh, online or digital version Digitize kar do sab kuch. Library ka kya zarurat hai? That is the thing people say. But when I was working, I can, it is recorded, I, I know what is the status. When I was working as a director of American library, we used to subscribe crores of rupees of databases for, that would be used in all 12 states under the uh, American consulate of Kolkata. And at the end of the year, we used to we were supposed to give the data of usage. I used to find only two percent of people have used our databases, and we have used crores of rupees for the, those databases. Now the question comes: How uh, important it would be when we are thinking about blended mode? Blended mode will be as I'm not saying it is bad, but blended mode should go hand to hand with books. Though they said that it will be a more you know classroom classroom uh, thing, more students teacher interaction. I do not know how it would be more inter uh, uh, students teacher interaction and classroom face to face teaching when we are thinking about online resources. So as a librarian. I would say that blended mode is welcome, but not neglecting the traditional concept of books. Hard copy of things should be there, rather should be increased with the new policy. The policymaker should think that. Policymaker should not make this mistake of other day, I am not mentioning the program name and all. There was a huge program somewhere in India about libraries and uh, the policymakers, one of the very big policymakers, I should say, she was saying that we should go for digitization. We should go for all digital materials. We should go for online materials. We should go for, she was not mentioning about the books. It was a program of librarians. So we should think both. It should go hand to hands. And then only in Indian scenario, as I show you the status, the data, it would be really difficult if we do not think about improving the facility, 
and uh, and uh, removing this gap of gap or divide among different categories. So decision is yours. You need to think how we go. And um, I have given my points as a librarian. I think 30 years I am in this profession. It is welcome, but um, people, those who are in this field, they should also be considered for making big decisions like this. Thank you very much for your patience hearing. And uh, I'm really grateful again to this university for inviting me for such a good day and uh, talk on the topic. Thank you. <clears throat> so, I don't know the, what should be the appropriate adjective after having this kind of mind-blowing presentation. And again, if I say mind-blowing, whether it should be blended mind-blowing <laughs> or it should be ICT-based mind-blowing yes. or it should be traditional mind-blowing or it should be hybrid mind-blowing. That second reason is yours. So, and now uh, the floor is open. At the outset, let me request participants. Please. At the outset, let me request before putting my observation, let it be open for uh, participants, those who are there. Uh, if you raise your hands, then my technical team is here to make you unmute so that you will take part in voice. And somebody, those who are intending to put up their message to chat box, we are here to welcome and accept that chat box too. And our research person is here today. I'm lucky that he is with us. Again, this is a kind of example of blended mode that some participants are online, some participants are physical line. And today's our speaker is with us at the, our library in physically. So this is again a kind of, uh, you know, what he is saying, this is a kind of apparent blind mode. So we are also having this apparent blind, uh, blind mode. So hmm? blended mode. If uh, Is there anybody who are just uh, going to raise your hands? Okay, let's message become by that time, anybody from this hall, if you would like to say anything, students, scholars, library colleagues, yeah. Your views. Your, your views, no issue. Yeah. You can take. I noted that. Yes, Sabat, welcome. Thank you, sir, for uh, such a thoughtful lecture. So, when learning goes not simply such a care to us as it has been now. So, the concept has changed after you mentioned. The concept is more clear. The uh, actual definition of blended learning that the materials, the videos, and the pictures should be there to the student. And after going through those uh, chapters, and they said they are coming to your classroom and in the respect and face to face with the teachers, that is a very good and dynamic mode of learning that will be very good if we can have such. And the role of teachers, as you said, it has become as a coach and mentor. They will be more to the uh, democratic discussion in the country. So, as a parent, I think and, uh, it will be more helpful for the students. And the rule of learning, because of this digital learning, uh, when we are giving the devices to the students, the young learners, we can see as a like, professional and as a course as well that the real habits of the students are reducing at the moment. So, so, what we suggest for uh, increasing the reading habits of uh, the students or our children, how we can work on this. And as you said, the infrastructure of India is not readily available for this. But as you find the planet, if we can have such kind of infrastructure, then I think our children or our students will be more beneficial. And as uh, our librarian has arranged the uh, you know, PhD course for classes, so we can also have this kind of uh, advantage of blended learning. We can provide that materials, reading materials and videos to our students. And afterwards, when we are continuing the classes, we can have the possibility. Right. 
So what do you expect? About? When we are giving the digital devices to the students, they are reducing the living habits. So as a library professional, so what do you suggest for the See, reading habit um, has to come from the home. If you read, automatically your son or daughter, your child will read. That is obvious. I haven't seen a family where parents are reading, their children are not reading. They are reading. So that has to come from the home, first of all. Second, We used to have our grandpa, grandma. They used to tell us stories, read books, a story from story books. Now that culture has gone. That is another problem. Third problem is, uh, don't take uh, nobody should take it otherwise. That we both, husband wife, we are going for job, and we are keeping our children with a remote and television set. So it is automatically they will be attracted towards um, television rather than a book. So these are the disadvantages. Now, as you said, how to improve reading habit? Only thing is you have to buy a lot of books, read books yourself and read books. Reading habits will, will automatically you can inculcate to your children. When you read a book to them, during uh, their bedtime. So that way they learn. And you need to read, your family people need to read, newspaper, whether it is newspaper, magazine, whatever it is. If reading habit is there in the home, student, your children will learn. Now, as far as college, university, um, school reading is concerned, that depends. Uh, I will say a uh, librarian plays a big role in inculcating reading habits among the students. You might have seen when you were in member of American Center, what kind of you know, programs we used to do so that we engage students and make them read books. Once we engage students, they will automatically come and they will read books. So that kind of programs, unfortunately, in academic libraries, a library like university library, we cannot do what we exactly want. Not always. It is We have certain policy. We have to follow those policies. So that way uh, we go. But it's still in university life. Reading, if we start, that could help the students uh, improve their reading habit. Maybe uh, let us do a quiz, let us do a debate, let us do something on that line and bring them to the library, show them the books, and that way uh, increase their reading habit. But I will emphasize once again that in this age, when Everything is available to the children, everything. It is we parents, our major duty should be to read and make them read. That is our duty. That is one of the most important duties. One or two hours of your daily routine should be given to your children. Then they will you know, promote it, advocate it to others. I don't know whether Dr. Saha would add something. Uh, Actually, what happened, uh, I am agreed with you, and I'd like to endorse the idea of whatever you were saying. More than that, my uh, clear observation, I can say not recommendation, not advice, that every day we being parents need to have a routine of reading when father, mother, children all will sit and read. Maybe newspaper, maybe a piece of paper, maybe that textbook, whatever it is, we need to. Sure. And we have to declare no mobile hour, no mobile journey. Yeah. <laughs> we may put it off, we may put it shut down the television, and we may do it. Let me just spell out my experience that usually my dad have it within the mosquito net before to sleep. I have to carry the newspaper 
and read, then I get sleep when I don't know. Surprisingly, my youngest son, who is having just seven, eight years old, now he is 10 years old, he used to have a book on some Tom and Jerry or whatever it is. He just tried to follow me. This is, then he also get asleep. But my now bad habit is, after having some health crisis, doctor suggest me, always you may not be carry stress. So you have to listen, you have to have some social network and do that and that. So now I am doing mobile jack in my ear before to sleep and try to listen some you know song and other things. Then I just try to make myself calm and cool, then go to sleep like that. As a result of that, he is now demanding, Papa, why don't I have a phone? You have, mother have, elder brother have. Only I am a man in the house who don't have any mobile phone. So please give me one handset. He is about nine years plus. So now tell me, as our speaker rightly said, if I am not reading, how can I expect that my son or daughter will read? In contrary, if I have any malpractice, how they don't do practice of that malpractice. So we are now trying to have a good session how to parenting of my children, of my guys, of my youth society as a whole, where their reading is not only a habit, but also, as I said last day, that I have a slide, why to read? There I have more than 70 slides. In BLA, they have a seminar. Why, how to inculcate reading habits in the year 2017, most likely. You are there with me at Calcutta. So there I have showing by slide that there are 30 physical diseases should be addressed if we are reading 30 to 60 minutes in a day. Believe me. And that is scientifically and medical journal recommendation that if a particular people have a reading habit 30 to 60 minutes, they will be kept aside from 30 different health crises or diseases, you know. Out of that, why today we are going to yoga? Why today we are going to control our breathing system? Why are we going to admit ourselves in laughing club, walking club? Why are we going to procure motorized walker in the house? Simply because okay. our physical and nervous system don't have any laborious activities. Soon after we are reading, our human brain, there are several neuron systems. They are trying to working. Now, if we are don't reading, if we just see, nowadays in Bengal, it is called Dekha Pora, not Lekha Pora. Okay, to me, it is called Dekha Pora, not Lekha Pora. So our reading habit is also, and writing habit is also gone away. And this last part of the finger, they don't have any you know, neural, uh, neural exercise. As a part of that, we are arrested many neural disease. So that's why we have to read and let's start from me and I have to stand me on in front of the mirror and instead of having cleaning the mirror, I have to clean my face. Then only my society, my uh, family members, my library, my students, my scholars, all will growing through the reading habit. This is my substantiation, substantiation with the uh, uh, submission of the resource person. I'll give you an example. Interesting. Uh, it, uh, uh, I, I was in a book. I used to go to the book fair. And we used to have a huge stall from American Center. Once we had a, we, we, we created a, a capital building there. So anyhow, that is secondary. I was taking a round in the book fair and saw in front of a small stall, there is a big queue of people, very big queue. And this stall is very small, maybe, I don't know, 10 by 10 stall. It created a lot of, you know, I thought, what is happening there? A lot of curiosity. I went there and saw a title of a book is prominently displayed. And the queue is for that title only. What is the title? I have that book I can show you even. Uh, the title of the book is Shami Ekti Grihopalito Jontu. <laughs> okay? So Shami Ekti Grihopalito Jontu Parvar Jonno Shami Dero Bho Dero 
আমি ওখানে ভিজে তাকে দিলাম যে আমার একটা নিতে হবে বইটার মধ্যে কি আছে দেখতেই হবে স্বামী একটি গৃহপালিত জন্তু তরুণ রায় তার লেখক বইটাতে কি আছে দাম মাত্র নব্বই এত লম্বা লাইন যে সে লাইনে দাঁড়িয়ে ওই বইটা আমি কিনব বাড়িতে নিয়ে গেল দেখলাম কিচ্ছু নেই বইটাতে শুধু টাইটেলটাতে বিক্রি হয়ে গেছে এটা একটা গেল সেই বইটাকে আমি খুব যত্ন করে রেখেছিলাম ফর দ্য প্রমোশন অফ লাইব্রেরি ট্রাস্ট মি হুইচ আই ডু স্টিল আরেকটা বই হাউ টু ট্যাকেল ইউর মাদার ইন ড এভরি ওয়ান উইল বি ইন্টারেস্টেড আই নো দি ভেরি গুড রিলেশনশিপ মাদার ইন ল অ্যান্ড দেয়ার ডটার ইন লভরি হ্যাড অল আর ভেরি হ্যাভিং ভেরি গুড ইকুয়েশন সো আই বট দ্যাট বুক অলসো হাউ টু হ্যান্ডেল ইউর মাদার ইন ল ট্রাস্ট মি দোজ টু বুকস আই প্লেসড ইন আমেরিকান সেন্টার ইন এ ভেরি বিগ ডিসপ্লে উইথ অ্যান আইডিয়া অফ কিপিং আদার বুকস অন দ্য টেবিল যে বইগুলো যায় না দোজ বুকস উইচ আর নট মুভিং I kept those books and a lot of people were there to see those books. At the same time, they could see the other books also, which are not moving from the library. And about, on those books, say about 50-60 books, at least 10 books were there, people took as loan. That was my achievement. So those two books I took to my library also. This new job, my new university library, and I did the same display. Trust me, I got the same kind of people, same response and same crowd and same benefit. So that way, maybe we need to promote reading. That is one of the ways I said. We say hot spot. We create a hot spot in library and keep those titles and see the crowd they come. Every year, every year by year. So those are the two half cakes. I can send those you know, titles to you also for your benefit. Okay, anyhow. So I have, given, I have given you some example. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think, uh, please. I just want to add something. Yeah, please. Uh, besides uh, home and parents, I think um, uh, in this school library and library have a pivotal role uh, to uh, promote the reading habit of these children. And uh, uh, since I have an uh, experience working in a school library, uh, we have two school library in Mishawarati, and these school libraries are very dangerous. Uh, I have seen there the students, and uh, in, in very little children, uh, six to seven, eight years old children, they come here, they come to the library, and they uh, besides the uh, parents and home, the student of this uh, <coughs> uh, age, I found oh, okay. that uh, the reading habit uh, is common uh, uh, in his reading habit in the রিডিং হ্যাবিট অ্যান্ড মোবাইল গেজেট উই আর ফাইটিং এগেনস্ট গেজেট অ্যান্ড মোবাইল রিডিং হ্যাবিট বুকস But I am showing that aid alert in future, one or two years. The mobile will be there. Reading habit will be totally gone because next one or two years, we will fight in with AI, yep. artificial intelligence, uh -huh. which has come to the market openly. And uh, we have we see and we will face so many problems. And everybody and more uh, students and will not read no will in the class they will make the research project proposal and titles with the help of ai so most of the jobs will be lost so total uh, situation is coming heavy uh, red alert so 
not we are fighting and talking about the rate of digital habit is gone. Now we are facing mobile gadgets and AI. The AI is already open to the market last two years. So it is very much a critical situation after two or three years. Another threat. Another threat. So total market will be full up. All that um, uh, gadgets and all the um, cars are running in USA without any driver. So driver job is gone. Hmm. The AI right. is the last year. It is specific. It is also helpful to the us because uh, till now we failed to go to the moon. But this year we uh, succeed due to the help of AI. <clears throat> this year AI totally AI controlled by the last soft branding. Uh, two, 20 minutes was totally uh, without control of the man. Totally controlled by the AI. That is why we have success. There is a good option for success. But in society, there will be a great uh, disadvantage with the help of AI. So our, our subject will be in future one or two The gadget and help the brain. The total brain will be damaged. No brain will be harmed. Not only it damaged. It is a great Alert to society. Okay. Okay, so uh, hello, sir. Yes, please introduce. Hello. Yes, please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is. Yes, yes. So my name is Shumit Chakraborty. I am working at Mineral Exposition Consultancy Limited, Nagpur, and pursuing yes. the my PhD also. Just in so short, my question is, Dr. Banerjee, yes. that. Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, sir. one thing is that uh, in the blended mode learning, as a, a young scholar, I am emphasizing on that matter that if if the digital learning or digital platform is not there, we may we may the professional work, workers or professionals, those who are in a profession, they could not continue to lifelong learning in the present situation. So there is we have all we have all in in the professions so con be being beside con continuous my professions and uh, uh, learning both are only possible on the blended mode otherwise it will not pos uh, possible i think so so my emphasize always in the learning uh, learning to the uh, through digital platform or the digital mode thank you sir Hello. Blended Hello. mode. Don't say only. Uh, don't say only digital mode. Say blended mode. That would be really important. Don't you go read books. You only read digital thing for your research. Be honest. Uh, then uh, okay. Then uh, may I now request Madam Nija Singh to input her observation and I'm thankful that you are long waiting and I found you in the board since starting to till this time. So please come up, madam. Thank you. I had to be there because I had to listen to Dr. Sushant Banerjee. He is <laughs> one of my first mentors and uh, a great influence on my life and profession. So I'll always be thankful to him and whatever he speaks is really, really very, very useful for all the professionals because he's not really a typical professional as he calls himself. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> but today's present, no, first I want to ask you, what was the name of the first book? You spoke it in Bengali. I didn't get it. The second one, I know the mother-in-law book, but what about the first one? Uh, the husband is a, uh, in a, a, is a pet. Domestic animal. Domestic animal. <laughs> oh, that's the right one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say, oh, you are interested to know that, right? I could answer that. I can guess that you'd ask that question. <laughs> Husband is a domestic animal. I'll send you that book, hard copy. Okay. But today's yeah. presentation uh, was very, very helpful for me, Dada, because generally we use this term blended learning, but we don't know what all goes behind this. 
you touched upon each and every every aspect right from the meaning which was made very clear up till the infrastructure and some really important data which you shared and some of them was really alarming in india and if we compare it to the ones which you shared the us data and all that so it was really thought provoking for me that uh, what could public libraries offer in this stream because uh, maybe infrastructure or other things in which we can assist in this uh, blended learning because people still don't have such facilities so maybe public library could be a space where such uh, facilities could be there be it a kind of a studio formation or a place where they can take lectures or some other resources which supports the blended learning so thank you so much and if you have any tips on that blended learning you are a, you are such a uh, you know uh, such a money puller i should say and you know all your administration you were the you are one of the intelligent uh, you know you are the uh, i don't know the leader of the intelligent people of punjab who represented uh, you know prime minister also so ask and get the money and get whatever devices you want in your library uh that i know you can so the money is the thing you know if we have money who says that we are not against we are against uh blended but we need to have money so uh, your kya bolte hai usko that uh, college i used to go to that man those who looks after the colleges uh, something i don't know he is there and you are known to the advisor of the governor also i know now so he is the man I do, I cannot give you tips. I can give you this kind of tips from where you can get the fund. These <laughs> are the is... practical. These are the practical tips actually. The rest all is bookish, but these kind of tips are practical. Yes, yeah. because yeah, currently yeah. also I have five six hundred students who are studying at present also in the library, and they are using oh. such services because still the internet connection and other things they are not being in a city. Also at times these children face a lot of problem. So giving good internet, fast internet speeds, and also they attend a lot of lectures, give online exams, and other things in the library. But we can really add to the facilities to help in this uh, blended learning. Mm. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nigar. Okay. So now I think uh, my ex colleague, Dr. Sujit Arivi, in the board, would you like to add something? Deputy Librarian, Sikkim Central University, Dr. Sujit. From my network officer or staff, those who have joined online, would you like to enlighten anything? Dr. Kausik, Dr. Sanudda, Tapusda, anybody else? So actually, uh, myself, Dr. Kausik, because uh, Sushantata is also familiar with me. So yeah. uh, it was a wonderful, and so I was listening uh, from uh, my chamber actually. So it was a wonderful uh, session as usual. Actually, I listened uh, before uh, Sushanta the uh, speech uh, before also. So we are now very. This is the right time to increase the reading habits. So we are now the threshold. So being a library professional, we have the responsibility uh, to the young generation so that right. uh, we may increase the reading habit day to day. So this is uh, not only uh, it's our uh, benefit for the society, it's also one kind of brain exercise too. Uh, accordingly, uh, it was recognized by the uh, scientists too. Also. So thank you very much, uh, Sushantata. And we are expecting many more such kind of special session in future too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are almost fragment of this session. Every good thing needs to an end. But still, I have a request to Dr. Anil Jharotia, sir. You are on the board. So may I request you to add something, Anil, sir? Yeah. Anil sir, would you like to add something, Dr. Anil Jarotia? Oh, okay, so fine. Uh, now it is 1.30. Usually, though it is official hour, by official hour, there is no lunch hour, but our stomach is asking us to input some food. Otherwise, 
uh, empty stomach, you know, nothing can be added in terms of knowledge or any input. So it's better to come to an end. And before to end, let me request my colleague, Dr. Sabath Nausin, who is assumed to be the in charge of our Dovindra Bhavan Library, as well as additional charge of Polish Modern Vivago Library, that is Institute of Rural Development, to offer formal word of thanks of today's session, as well as winding up this five days national level academic and research skill development program. Dr. Nosen, please. Thank you, sir, for providing this platform for the uh, on behalf of the Shikhati Library Network, we would like to offer our sincere gratitude and thanks to Dr. Shashanti Banerjee, the Library President of State University of Barasan, for his dynamic of promoting and innovative speech on such an association, like the Nazarene and present in this scenario, on this five day national level program to mark one five second for the University of Padmashi, Dr. S. Ramanathan Nayan. We are grateful and would like to congratulate our library and company, Martin Saha, for organizing such a successful program. We would like to thank the whole team of the Shubhat Library Network and the audience for making the program a great success. We are grateful to the Shubhat Authority for encouraging and granting us the permission for organizing such a program. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks are also due to Dr. Sawat Nausin because you are also soldiering one day introducing our one of the speaker and also today you are soldiering the responsibility to offer a word of thanks and being member of the uh Mr. network thanks are also due to you because who is offering word of thanks nobody is there to offer him or her word of thanks so i on behalf of the network let's offer you word of thanks and i have no word but uh i would like to request my dada and i can say mentor to offer his gracious consent in near future whenever we are just going to arrange this kind of uh, session. And with your expertise, I mean, three decades you are in this field, always your inputs will help us to carry forward library professions and library service for the utility and to make it more and more useful for the next gen scholars and academic arena. So I do expect some kind of cooperation dada from you, you. <laughs> for our entire journey. So thank you. And with kind permission from all online participants and all physical participants, let us now wind up or wrap up the session formally and let us now close our online meeting. Thank you, Nija ma'am. I would like thank to you, contact sir. I you. really want to congratulate you for organizing this uh, wonderful program. Rather, I was just seeing the kind of diverse uh, subjects that you chose and even the resource persons. It's really remarkable. I really congratulate you. Okay, okay. And so thank you I'd for having me for one of the sessions. Great, great. And I'd like to seek your cooperation in near future. Okay. Sure, sir, always. Thank you. Thank you. So let us now wind up the session. And we'd like to, uh, by this session, we'd like to pay our tribute to Indian father of library and human science, that is, Dr. Raisa Ranganathan on the eve of his 132nd birth anniversary. So thank you very much. Thank you for your cardial support. Thank you. Let us close this session.